that talks about Second Amendment issues. How you doing, John? John Cox, gubernatorial ca- oh. ca- uh, uh, candidate for, for governor. See? Yeah, I know it's not that. Yeah, it's harder than it yeah, looks. It's harder than it looks. All right. John, how are you? Great to be with you guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Fantastic. So you are so – t- now, this is not your first run for governor, right? Um, so no. tell no, us. I ran in 2018 when everybody thought it was going to be two Democrats. And I surprised the whole world. Uh, I got almost 5 million votes, and I'm using that as a base this time. My people know how bad Newsom is, and they want free of him. And uh, the, this, the people of this state deserve a turnaround. Uh, housing, homelessness, water, electricity, the schools, uh, crime is, is escalating all across the state, and we've got to do something about it. Well, you know, it's funny, John, because people talk are starting to say, you know, this recall is not going to work. They're going to figure out how to keep him. And I said, forget about the recall. You know, you, is, did you sign it? Yeah, good. Let's worry about the, the, the election. You know, stop paying attention to that right now. Now we got to go to the election. And I think if people don't start thinking that way, they need to. Well, they should. And, you know, listen. This pandemic management that Newsom has done has wow. just destroyed a lot of businesses in this state. I mean, we've got 19,000 businesses that have gone out of business and probably aren't going to come back. We've had our kids out of school for well over a year. I'm not sure they're all going to be back in the fall. And we've still got this litany of issues that, you know, this is a beautiful place to live, guys. But you know, the the fact that we've got homeless all over the streets and, and the politicians are powerless to do anything about it. We've got an unbelievable cost of living. We've got the highest taxes in the country. At the same time, we have the highest poverty rate because we're squeezing the middle class into poverty. People are leaving this state. We've had the first drop in population in history for California. I believe the people of this state are finally re- they're finally at the point where they feel like we have to make a change, and we will. So, John, California is enormous. That's not breaking news. Um, <laughs> we're a huge economy. What, like seventh or eighth yeah. biggest economy in the world? There are two hundred yeah, or so course. countries in the world, and and California is bigger than just about all of them. I mean, we're, we're, it's basically running. You're running your your own little little country here. It's 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 enormous. It's it's diverse. There's you know, urban, suburban, and rural, you know, it's as complicated as it gets. What, what's your background and what qualifies you to uh, run California? I, I've started my own business when I was 25 years old. I've run a successful business for 40 years, and I've run that business. It's a $300 million business. I started it from nothing, and I run it by solving problems and delivering results. I manage people. I hold them accountable. That's not what's done in government. I mean, what we've had is a a history of celebrities and career politicians in California who have not been able to manage people. They've not been able to deliver results. They don't hold people accountable. And, And frankly, a lot of them have been corrupt. I mean, let's face it, we've got one of the most corrupt govern- governors in history, Mr. Newsom. I don't know if you saw the recent news where he's getting all kinds of contributions to his wife's charity from people who do business with the state. What? And then his wife takes a $2 <laughs> million dollar salary out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shocked. I mean, you know, listen, yeah. I got to tell you, people, the trouble in California is that people have become too used to this corruption. Yeah, we've got to rise up. We've got to have a rebellion. We've got to do something about the unbelievable taxes and and the mismanagement of the state, the housing crisis. We're we're uh, we're in a situation now where we have a drought, which is a man made drought, a government caused drought. The same thing with electricity. We're being told now that we have to uh, not turn on our air conditioners because we're not going to be able to have enough electricity because we don't have enough electricity supply. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to follow that. I'm going to follow that suggestion about as closely as I followed the mask suggestion. Okay. So (laughs) you're, you're an executive and I think this is an important point to make. You're not running for a legislative position. Um, and there's a very yeah. big difference between a legislator and an executive. A lot of people uh, want to know what laws the president's going to pass when he gets into office. Well, guess what? That's not what he does. An executive, uh, it's a very different skill set. And I would argue that we haven't really had a true executive 
as a as a governor in quite a while. So I, I you know that I think your your skill set is it definitely matches up for the job. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and not only that, by the way, you should know that I'm a CPA. I started out in my career as a CPA. I'm also a lawyer and an investment advisor, and I understand how business works. Listen, a, Gee, a lot you're a, of wait a minute. You're a CPA, the- so you're a CEO, a CPA, an investment advisor, right. and an attorney. Yes, that's you, like you're you like your. You don't need to hire anybody. I know you're like you're like a, you're like a <laughs> modern professional version of like the village people. You're like, <laughs> he's yeah. got it all. Well, you know, you know what it gives me though. It gives me the ability to detect BS when I see it mm. because I know what all these things should encompass, and I'll know BS when somebody's giving it to me. But let me tell you, the biggest characteristic we need is a business person who will hold people accountable. That's what I do every single day in my business life. I set budgets. I tell people I want them to meet those budgets. I want them to meet their goals in terms of service to my customers and service to the people that we you know, bring in. And that is what is totally lacking in government. There's almost no accountability. There's no, almost no goal setting where people are actually held to a standard and, and that's what business people do all day long. If you look around the country, you've got states like Massachusetts, Maryland, North Dakota, Arizona, Tennessee, where people have voted for business guys who have never been elected to any right. job before. Doug Ducey in Arizona, Doug Burgum in North Dakota, Larry Hogan in Maryland, Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, Bill Lee in Tennessee. So These we, are guys who are steeped in business and right. who deliver for the voters, and they like them. Right, and so we've established. I think that that my personal opinion is that we need more executives running for uh, executive positions, like governor, president, et cetera. I agree. Um, I where, agree. Now, but you, you're going to have to work with the legislature a lot. That's a big part of the job of governor, especially in California, where we're just about we've just about turned into a to a big D democracy. We're we're practically not even a representative. Uh, you know, constitutional uh, government anymore. But anyway, uh, so where we're do you stand? Representational the republic. Well, I yeah. we we're supposed to be. So where do you stand yeah. on Second Amendment issues? I'm a lifetime member of the uh, NRA. Uh, I believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I I look at California, and California has the most gun laws of any state in the country. Yet our murder rate is climbing, and the reason for that is because we don't punish people who use uh, guns in the commission of crimes. What we need to do is punish criminals. Newsom has done nothing but let people out of jail, uh, issue pardons to people who commit crimes. He got into office, immediately said that he wasn't going to pursue the death penalty, even though the voters of this state voted in an initiative, voted twice in the last 10 years to not only reaffirm the death penalty, but to insist that it be sped up, yet Newsom's first act was to basically put a you know uh, put a hand in front of the uh, voters and say he's not going to enforce those initiatives. So we last need somebody who's going to. So last yeah, Friday, uh, John, last Friday, our a, a, a case that we're a plaintiff in uh, against the the quote yeah. unquote assault weapons ban in, in California, he uh, had a press conference to announce that they were going to appeal, which is a highly unusual. Uh, I've never seen a press conference announcing someone that you know they're going to appeal. So it was clearly a political thing. Where would you? Where do you stand on that? Where, did you see the press conference? Or well, n- no, I didn't need to see the press conference. I know we're new some stance. You know what? He didn't read that opinion. Judge Robert, uh, Judge Roger Benitez issued a great opinion. You know, the first sentence probably wasn't the most artfully worded one, where he compared it to a Swiss Army knife. But if you read that opinion, if you really went went into the guts of that opinion, you saw that the judge pointed out that a lot of murders, way more murders happen in California with knives than with assault weapons. The assault weapon is a political term. There's no such thing as an assault weapon. That's That's a term given by politicians who want to scare people. What we need to do is punish crime and give people the means to defend themselves. All That's right, John, John, fantastic. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio.
You can watch us live every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're in the San Diego area, you can listen to us on 1170 a.m. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can help restore and protect the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.